Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hello, Facebook. We're here with Rich with Lighthouse Marine, and um, we're going to talk about some outboard maintenance. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is Facebook Live, so feel free to ask your questions, even if you're not here. Uh, maybe you just got out of church. Whatever. Um, we're glad you're here with us. And uh, even if it's not the live video, go ahead and ask your questions. We want to make sure that everybody is safe and, and taking care of their boats for the summer season. Um, but we will turn it over to Rich. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one of the biggest issues that we're dealing with right now is uh, quality of fuel, or the poor quality of fuel. This, I brought some samples along. This is a, uh, what fuel should actually look like, which actually literally looks like water. And that is a clean sample of fuel that I, I picked up today on my way in. Um, I'm not sure how old this fuel is, but this fuel is... Uh, pretty well on its way to being non-usable. Uh, the octane rating is down to where uh, it could do some damage to the engine. And then this one is one that came out, actually came out of a gentleman's fuel hose. I cleaned his fuel tank and found some water as a portable fuel tank. And this has got a little bit of oil in it, but uh, it also has water. And when you shake it up, you can, uh, I don't know if you can quite see it, but it's kind of turned kind of, kind of cloudy. Um, and again, uh, we cleaned the fuel tank, but if we wouldn't have cleaned this fuel line, uh, that would have gone directly into the carburetor and he would continue to have an issue. And right now, carburetor cleanings are uh, really expensive on the little engine, so we tried to make sure that we have good, clean fuel. Uh, this is a good thing to have on a boat, which is a, this is a Raycor filter with a removable bowl, and it's also drainable. When it has a plastic bowl, it's okay for an outboard motor. If you have a stern drive engine, you need to have a metal bowl on here, and they would have a brass plug on the bottom for draining purposes. Uh, but this is for uh, outboards only. And then this is another filter assembly that uh, uh, Yamaha, and there are some other vendors that supply these, that have a stainless steel head uh, and a very large filter for collecting water and debris. Uh, again, with all the water that we're getting, we, lot, we want a large capacity. And then this is also a stainless steel um, uh, head, and we've had a lot of problems with corrosion on the inside from the moisture we're getting in the fuel. Uh, the filter itself is not stainless steel. Uh, these will rust out, and but the stainless steel head, uh, you would never wear this out. This And this Raycor filter can also fit on this particular um, head. It's a kind of a universal, and the Mercury water separating fuel filters will fit on here also. So <clears throat> it's very, very important to have a a, a good base so you're not putting contaminants from the base into the filter. And in some cases, this the outlet up here will go directly into the motor uh, after it's gone through the filters, and you kind of go, where where'd all this stuff come from? So filters are important. Quality of fuel is important. Uh, we get asked a lot, can I put some fresh fuel on my old fuel and, you know, make it better? And the best analogy to that is, would you put fresh milk over sour milk? It's not going to make your sour milk better. So you're better off to dispose of the, of the fuel and find some place safe to, to get rid of it. And then uh, make sure you get as much out as possible, and then uh, the engine should, should not have any problems. This is a fuel additive. It's an enzyme treatment. Uh, you don't need a lot of it. For the first treatment, you double up the, the dosage on the, what it says on the bottle, and then after that, you use, um, I think it's one ounce per 10 gallons. It's uh, actually one ounce for 16 gallons for after you've done the initial dosage. And this is a very, very good product. And they say you can't overuse it, but uh, I try not to do it. But typically, six months, eight months is about maximum for fuel. Uh, and in the summer times, fuel all already starts deteriorating after about two weeks. So it's a good idea to run the fuel treatment year-round. Whenever you do a refill, make sure you use the treatment. Uh, the other issue that we're dealing with was uh, uh, carbon deposits on the motors. And Yamaha makes a good product called Ring Free, which is a uh, deposit cleaner when the engine is running. And it's a good idea to run that continually and to keep the engine from carboning up. Some people say, I just run my motor at idle, which isn't good because the engine doesn't get hot enough to get rid of all the carbon. So the ring free will definitely help with that. The other thing that we deal with too on the uh, four cycle engines 
is fuel contamination in the oil. And that can come from the engine running too cold. And what happens is that with the engine running cold, in the ca most cases they run at like 125 degrees at idle, and <clears throat> the fuel doesn't get a chance to evaporate out of the oil. And then pretty soon your oil level increases. And when that increases, it's because of the fuel that gets in the oil. So what you want to do is make sure you keep an eye on the oil level. Always check it before you run the motor in the morning. Make sure if you have the engine tilted, that you tilt it down to where it's level. Take, take, uh, clean it, pull the dipstick out, clean it, and then push it back in again. And then uh, take, take your reading. If you see it start to increase above the full mark, you know, if it's like an inch above the full mark, you need to change your oil and then find out why you're getting so much fuel in your oil. So that's really important. Um, the two cycle engine oils, um, we have, we use the Mercury brand. We use, actually we use our engine manufacturer's brands of oil and it has an NMMA rating on it. And what these ratings are, are a minimum rating. And the manufacturers, uh, they basically run their engines, test them on their own oil. They're not manufacturers of oil, but they tell the oil companies what they want and to make the engines run longer. Same thing with the four cycle engines. They formulated a, a special oil for the four cycle outboard motors. It's not the same oil that you get uh, for your automobiles. So it's a good idea. It's, it's really highly recommended that you get, like Yamaha's got their 4M oil, which means it's four stroke marine. They may also make one for their water vehicles, which is a different four cycle oil. And they also have a different four cycle oil for their, for their motorcycles. So oil is important. Not all oil is the same. So it's really good to get the correct oil for your engine and typically get a manufacturer's oil. And then the, the two cycle oil is TCW3. And the four cycle oil, they call it FCW, which stands for four cycle marine. The other uh, things that we're dealing with is a lot of corrosion in the motors. Uh, and sometimes engines will run a little bit hot or they'll, <coughs> they'll run, uh, impellers will go bad, engines don't get run enough. <coughs> so we've been using a product called, <coughs> excuse me, Saltway, which you can flush the engines out and you leave the product in the motor, you don't flush it. And once you flush the engine, you start to see a, a soapy solution come out. You shut the engine off and let it sit. And what this does is helps keep the salt in suspension on the engine. And next time you start it up, it will, it'll flush itself out. Uh, salt is like, uh, actually it's almost like a cancer. What it will do is it'll fester. Every time it gets hot and dries out, hot and dries out, it actually starts to grow. And we've had uh, a lot of uh, gear case housings that have been cracked because salt of salting. Uh, exhaust housings cracked. And <clears throat> so it's a good idea to flush your engine out and, and take the best care that you can with it. Uh, cooling systems are really important. And this is a particular impeller that came out of a running engine. The customer came in uh, and said that uh, you spend three years, I want to replace my impellers. And he had twin engines, <clears throat> and both the impellers are, are damaged. And he didn't have any cooling issues. It was just more preventative maintenance. And this is what the impeller should look like. I mean, it's perfectly, uh, the blade should be out like that. Sometimes they'll get deformed a little bit, but this one actually has started to come off from, from the hub itself. So uh, preventative maintenance is really important on your cooling system. Water pumps, if it's been to at least two or three years, is something you really need to take a look at. The, uh, and then while you're doing that, you want to change the gear lube. And they make a Yamaha, and actually all the engine manufacturers make a pump that you can actually put onto a bottle that's about the same size as this. You pump it <clears throat> from the bottom of the gear, where you drain the gear lube, until it can, comes out the vent hole. And uh, that's the best way to fill your gear lube. The, uh, when, you, when you're changing the gear lube, you just want to also look at the quality of the oil. Make sure they're, if it's cloudy, if it's milky colored, and that, that's an indication you're getting water in the lube. So you want to make sure that if you're doing that, that you address that issue. Find out where it's coming from. Either take it into a shop and have them take a look at it. But, uh, and then always want to change the gear lube washers. Uh, that's really important. 
And then the other thing that we deal with too is uh, uh, if you have mechanical steering, this is a, a, my sample for, uh, that I show my customers when they come in the door, is that the steering uh, cables always freeze up in this area right here, and it's from lack of lubrication. And it's really important to get this greased at least yearly. And then if, if for some reason you can't get this apart, they make a, this is a, called a Zerk nut that you can put on. And this actually screws onto the motor and then you have a, a Zerk fitting here. You want to get the cable fully extended, pump it about three or four times full of grease, make sure you uh, retract the cable and force the grease through it. And then that should keep your steering cable greased up for the year. But uh, it's a real important, it's, it's not that expensive an item for uh, a steering cable job is typically four or $500. So this is about a $40 part. So it doesn't make sense not to do it. I have all my guys put them on when we're servicing the motors. Um, the, uh, this is another product that we deal with with corrosion block because of the corrosion, the salt buildup, and poor, poor connection to the batteries. Um, I've been using this product for probably about 25 years, and they haven't changed it because they didn't need to. It just, it just works. Um, I had a company come by and just give me a can of it and said, here, try it. And I did, and, I, and I've been using it ever since. But corrosion block is a great product. You can spray it on your electrical. You can do uh, uh, spray it on your block, your, your engine, anywhere that you have rust or corrosion, uh, battery, uh, battery connections, you can deal with it there. The uh, probably the the biggest thing on the engines is making sure you keep them greased up. Oil changes every year in the fall when you're not when you're through using it. It's really important not to keep that oil in the engine through the winter, and then in the springtime you're ready to use it. Even though it's been in there all winter long, it's it's still okay, and it's not good just to start the engines at the dock and let them idle. What you want to do is if you're going to start and run the engine, take it out and run it and, uh, you know, get some time on the engine. Let it, hit, let it warm up and get, get heated up, uh, and it'll give you an excuse to get back out in the water. And uh, the other, the last thing that I really would kind of want to talk about, too, is if all else fails, this is a product. It's actually called a handheld flare, and it is, uh, can be used. It's actually, it's got a 10-mile uh, range on it. And you just screw the top, it takes uh, three C batteries, you screw it down on the top, and it's a really, and then it, it flashes an SOS signal. And it, it's just a real good safety measure. You don't have to worry about finding a flare, and you can put, tie this around your wrist and carry it with you if you need to, but it's a, it's a very valuable tool if, if all else fails and the, and the engine, engine quits. Um, anybody have any questions? Um, so I'm coming up on 20 hours mm -hmm. for the first uh, oil change, mm -hmm. right? Is that still recommended? Yep. Yes. Somewhere between 20 and 30 hours yeah. for the first one? Yeah, 10, 20 hours, yeah. What are you generally looking for on that very first inspection, being that it's you know, fairly brand new? Like, you know, what would you expect as the uh, biggest issues that you found in a new engine? Well, fortunately, we haven't found a lot of good uh, issues with the new motors, but what we're trying to get rid of is that the engines uh, scuff uh, metal when they when they're running the four cycle engines do they real, they're very finely honed but the rings will scuff off some some really some uh, high spots in the cylinder when it's running so you're trying to get the metal out you know whatever contaminants may be in that first batch of oil you want to get that out gear case is the same way you're breaking in the gear case along with the power head so you're trying to get the metal out of there and then you're also looking for water in in the gear loop and I have had a couple instances where we've had to, you know, reseal a gear case or, or something like that. But uh, primarily, it's it's just making sure everything is okay. Yeah. And then uh, we want to make sure you know prop comes off and things like that. But uh, pulling the propeller is really important to do uh, once a year because uh, if all you know if you're out running around and something happens and you try to pull the prop off and you can't get it off, you go, oh, what do I do? And then also, we, uh, when we do it, we also look to make sure the prop hub is okay. We've had, re we've had a lot of uh, propeller hub damage and, you know, from hitting things and that. And uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, I just hit a rock and damaged my prop. And, you know, I'll have to get this prop fixed and, you know, we'll be good to go. Well, <clears throat> in a lot of cases, the prop shaft gets bent 
or a gear gets damaged and things like that, depending on how, how badly the propeller uh, is damaged. In fact, stainless steel propellers are really hard on gear cases. You know, they go thump, thump, and pretty, pretty soon you get a bent prop shaft. I, whenever I'm servicing a motor, I always typically walk by the motor if it's tilted up, spin the prop, look at the prop shaft, see if, it's, see if I can see it wobbling at all. And uh, I've probably found at least six or eight of them just, just, by, just because I was, I was nosy. And uh, it's really important to do that. Um, anybody, anything else? So you, you said to get the boat out and uh, run it past idle for a while. Um, if my wife said, honey, why are you at, at the boat so much? Mm -hmm. It's because of the boat health, right? At, How correct. often should I be running it? Probably uh, once a month. Idle? Once a month. But take it out and run it. Take it out, take it, you know, cut away from the dock, go out, out like in our case, go outside the harbor, go out and get the boat up on plane. You know, five minutes, ten minutes is, is plenty. And then that helps get that engine temperature up and keeps that oil from getting condensation in it. That's the biggest thing on a four cycle is condensation. Two cycles, you don't see it quite so much. They're not as critical because a two cycle engine will leave a lot of residue, uh, residual oil inside the crankcase. Uh, four cycle oils are our four cycle engines uh, typically um, you know they, they're relying on heat to help get that everything lubricated properly and uh, the other thing too as far as the wind rising and that and, and maintaining the four cycle engines if you leave the engine tilted down and say for an hour or two after you've run it and you go to start it especially if it's tilted trimmed in a little bit and you go to start it you're going to see a puff of smoke and you go you know is there something wrong with my engine? No, there isn't. What happens is oil builds up behind the, the pistons and then it seeps past the rings into the cylinder and then when you start it, it just puffs that little bit of residual oil out and then, and then it, everything is fine after that. If the engine was tilted slightly, just a little bit past uh, neutral or just tilted up just a little bit, it won't do that. All the oil will drain back into the crankcase and, and that won't be an issue. But typically on a four cycle engine, if you see a little puff of smoke when you first start it, uh, it's not anything to worry about as long as it goes away. And the four cycle engines have a tendency to steam a little bit more than you see with the two cycle engines. So uh, that's, it, as long as it's, uh, all your warning systems are intact, uh, you should be good to go. Alrighty. Again, thank you for uh, joining us today on uh, Facebook Live on the Gig Harbor Marina and Boatyard Facebook page. Thank you again yep. to Rich uh, for thank coming you. in. And, You're welcome. And uh, if you have any questions at all, even after this video is done being live, feel free to ask them, ask Rich. Um, we would love to make sure you're safe on the water. All righty. Thank, thank you for joining us, and uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you.